Is this right? Is this how you want it? I I uh, hate stress. Found out I don't deal with it well. I'm, I, so, I'm sorry. You just found that out? Well, no. Here's the deal. I I oh I don't kind of hurt. <laughs> This is like this is like someone that says like I like air. It's a really weird statement. There's no, no, no. no. Yeah. Who's against what who, you're saying? No, 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 no. What's the oh, it's not. It's not against. It's it's dealing with stress well. Like I know yeah. people who who deals with stress well. Pick stress one. ball companies. I think lots Pick of people. Pick one person. Everyone I was gonna name was a joke, and I don't want to say it because it's recorded. Because <laughs> I don't think there's anyone that does. No, totally. So Ashley, my wife, deals with stress like a champ. Her her brother died. Right. That's. The most stress. I mean, that's horrific. And I honestly was like, she she handles that kind of stuff. She has a poise and a wisdom about like, and I mean, throughout daily life. And she cried and would break down. And it's not that. It's just that. Uh, well, she handles stress mainly by sleeping, which is very impressive. But I like just got stressed out. I I messed up something and somewhat may have messed up a friendship, which I don't think I did. But, uh, <gasps> Tell the story. I don't want to oh. actually. Uh, hmm. We'll be <laughs> fine, Ryan. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love Josh's response. Well, and I was mm-hmm. really and it, honestly, it was like two days of like gut pain and not pain, but you know that like knot in your stomach. And last night I was just like, dude, I don't. I think I lived a really sheltered life and everything worked out. Everything was fine. And even when I'd get injured, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to heal. And it was, I just wasn't stressed about anything. Then when stress hit for the first time, I broke out in shingles and was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. And Are you saying recently that just happened? No, that was like, it was honestly like, it was the first time I honestly felt stressed. And it sounds so dumb. I know, but like, was it like, was it college? No, it was after college. After I, college. I was, uh, I'll never forget it. Cause it was, I was officiating the second wedding I had ever done. And so, and that wasn't what the stress was like. That stuff doesn't stress me out. Right. It was family stuff. And then my grandmother passed away and I had just mm. never, I was in my twenties before I think I honestly faced any type of adversity in life. And it sounds dumb. I know. Cause I like people grow apart. Then it's dumb. Cause I go, dude, I grew up with my dad in prison. Like, who say, am I kidding? I say it's, it's, you were, you I were, bottled it all up in denial yeah. until all of a sudden, like then it hits you. You're like, huh? and you're almost like, why is this happening? happening. Right. And then you go to therapy and they're like, you mean this very traumatic experience exactly. you've had in your life? And I think I've always and just bottled everything up. And so now when I feel something, I try and face it like head on because I don't want to like bottle it up. I don't want to wait. And so I'm very attentive to those types of things now. The problem is now I'm like, I, I did something I, there was a misunderstanding and a friendship and it's kind of tough because he, he's not mad, but he was just kind of like, oh, I just got to sort some stuff out. He's fine. I took it on as like, oh, I'm the worst. I ruined everything. And I'm like, calm down, dude. You didn't do anything. Like, what do you, yeah. it was just, it shocked me because it was two days of me kind of like almost self pity wallowing and like, I screwed up so bad. I can't believe I did this. Trying to just function. And then I went, oh, I'm, that's not facing it. I'm not sitting with it. I was really distracting right. myself. And then yeah. I went, okay. So I spent a couple hours last night with the Lord and just went, like, what's going on? And it's still, it was so interesting that I still put my self worth on what I do. Yeah. And so, when I do something negative, my self worth dropped, mm-hmm. and I was like, "What is going on?" Like that, it's, it was news to me last and, night. Like, and so the the relation, the broken relationship, or the damaged mm-hmm. relationship, which probably isn't really either one of those right. things in the long but term. Feel, yeah, perception is. Yeah, that's that's the fruit of it. Those are the things that we can see, right? But you realize there's a deeper underlying. Yeah, issue. yeah, yeah. There yeah. almost always is. Yeah. It's always the, the case. It's funny, is uh, you you did you know we talk about we go and spend time with the Lord and therapy they call naming it like name it what is what is this thing like get at that yeah uh and for me a lot of times naming it and then taking away my perceived consequence and dealing with the actual consequence of all of really it was perceived mm-hmm. con- and i'm not kidding you it yeah. was all perceived consequence and what's funny is one of the the real consequences happened that i was perceiving and i'm like i screwed this up i screwed it up for everybody and i did and that's the truth and I went, oh, but that it was lesser when it happened than yeah. it was for what I was thinking about it. Yeah. And I went, oh, I just need to, I don't know, it was this weird, like, you know how you just blow everything out of proportion in your head? Yeah. And I kept telling myself, like, yeah, but God still loves me. And God's like, yeah, I do. What are we talking about? Like, those are very different yeah. concepts. And I was yeah. mudding it all together. I always mm. mud those together. Why? Yeah. It's so weird, I have dude. To, I, have to literally, I literally have to, like, go into meetings. I have to parse those before the meeting. Yeah. I mean, like, what's at stake in this meeting? Right. Because I've got heaven and hell at stake in this meeting. <laughs> right? And I'm like, okay, let's get those apart. Yeah. And whatever happens here, it'll all be fine. It's yeah. all going to be all right. We've yeah. talked about this a couple of times recently. It happened for me 
me. It happened for another guy that we know. Like it's that it's that last final thing that isn't really the issue at all, but that makes you realize that you're so messed up in so many other areas. That last thing that happens is usually something so minor. Like in my like case, a mi- like, like a trigger, like a minor. No, like M I N. E-R. E-R, yeah. E-R, yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a, a, no, no, yeah, no. He, it's a, O-R. He went O-R. Oh, it's O-R. O-R. There's, O-R. A, there's a, okay. It's so minor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeehaw! <laughs> Hang on, pause, pause, yeah, yeah. Pause. The catalyst, the last thing that kind of pushes you over the edge is usually something so insignificant, and you think that that's the issue, but it's not. It's just, it's the it's the incident that pushes you over the edge. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. I, I think had the, that recently, exactly another guy that I yeah. met with I this morning. I think the older we get, the more we accumulate crap. Oh, okay. maybe so that's I think when what I'm it younger, is. I'm not holding on so much. Constipation is real. That's right. I blew everything off when I was a kid. Like, I didn't, didn't it, think about it. In no, fact, I'm invincible. I'm, I'm immortal. Nothing like, mattered. And yeah. then they get yeah. a little bit older, and I think maybe also, I think it's not. It's not even seeing the consequence. It's just not dealing. It just just keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it. down. That's what I'm Jeez. realizing. I think I must have been. I must have been bottling up so much stuff, and I think that's true. With even like losing money with the Bitwise thing. Mm-hmm. I think I had I, I, I was dealing with it and still I am. Well, we also say the guys if I'm okay. So like the, the yeah. right. you're not stuffing it down. You're just like no, I'm fine. Right. But the, and the reality is you're not fine. Yeah. Like and well, it's okay that you're not fine. Right. This should it's okay. This bothers you. Right. And you should spend yeah. some time being like exactly. being mad or sad or whatever it is and just kind of you know walk in that a little bit. But it's just easier to be like because it's funny is in my healthiest version I imitate Ryan. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I do the, like... It's a uh, bad move. It it's is. a bad <laughs> move. For me. A lot of did, people get punched. Did you yeah, notice a, that he said they get older and he left himself out he, of that? Yeah, like he doesn't he, get older. He doesn't yeah. get older. Yeah. No, he's already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good. I'm looking back on a long <laughs> trail to you guys. <laughs> guys, when you get here, <laughs> I'll show you the way. It's a lot more <laughs> <laughs> when you get to this point, it gets worse. Just so can you, you know. hear me? What is he saying over there? <laughs> you were uh, you were dealing with this a little bit when you came back from sabbatical too. I remember uh-huh. you and I had a conversation that yeah. you had some unprocessed mourning that you hadn't let happen. That, but when you start digging into that, man, that really is a long process, and it sucks. You're right, yeah. and I think some of it is. I uh, so I've been listening to that Exodus series with Jordan Peterson, and uh, they had basically said that in, it, it, it's this concept of in order for a tree to grow larger, the roots have to go deeper. So the, mm-hmm. the concept that they use is in order to reach to heaven, you have to reach down to hell first. And mm-hmm. it was just this like, you really have to dig in. And I'm realizing, and he, it was funny because I've been hearing it thinking like, I'm, I'm in, like, I like that kind of stuff. I actually like to figure myself out. I like it. And then as I've started to do it, I'm like, oh, I don't like, I don't he's like talked it. about how bad it was. And I'm like, I don't get why it's bad. And I'm like, oh, I get why it's bad now. I don't. You- I don't like this. You like the result, but the yeah. process is terrible. It's Ugh. like that guy that was just here a few minutes ago. We had a guy pop in, and he was telling us his story, and it brought this us This is fun. Years. We're going to talk about this because a guy literally walked in just off walked the in. street and was like, hey, the Holy Spirit led me here. And we're like, oh, this is going to yeah. be... So we want to talk about that in a little bit. And you yeah. mentioned Brother Lawrence and someone else. Yeah, that, Tita. You yeah. Know, uh, that Sister Lori. It's those, it's those near-death experiences that often lead people. Those are the catalysts that, that propel people into yeah. great works. But it's yeah. hard to... To face that stuff and literally the reason why to do it by don't. choice and to is do it insane and to do it alone like oh, if you're doing gosh. this by yourself the reason why yeah. people go to therapy is because uh-huh. there is this like there is like uh you know when you're starting to face some dark stuff it's really difficult and scary and it actually yeah. becomes a block where you won't grow or grow and mature more because you're like i can't face that thing and sometimes you don't know what is the thing you can't face that's what's so hard about this yeah. you're like there's something there uh-huh. and you're like i'm willing and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, but no, that's, I, mm, there's something about that I don't want anymore. Do you know what's funny is about. it just, I'm so glad you said that because it just reminded me of something a, a therapist said, which I'm like, oh, frick, I told somebody else this very recently and I love that I just remembered it for myself, is he said, when you're, when you're dealing with big things or traumatic things, you set aside a specific amount of time every day to deal with it. Mm. Yeah. You give yourself an hour or two hours at night or in the morning, like that's your spot. Then you put it away because otherwise you won't be able to function that was mentioned in the exodus series too in the yes. conversation and i was like that's such that is such a beautiful concept for me uh, i had mentioned somebody recently who had a loss in their family and it was such a big deal that they couldn't function right they couldn't go to work anymore and it's like and after months they couldn't and i'm like oh that's because you're letting it consume your whole life it was so funny because that clued in and i went you set aside that time and you yeah. say this is going to be my morning time i'm going to lose my 
for two hours every day. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, I'm going to, and it sounds weird, but I'm going to bottle it up. I'm going to put it away. What? I think it was you that told the story about a lady that had had a, a law. I think her husband died young. It was an out of time death. And she started going like to the Dollar Tree, the 99 yes. cent store and yeah. buying glassware and plates and dishes and stuff like that. Literally just to break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so healthy. That was, that was Heidi, Heidi. Manson. Yeah. Heidi. She, she's part of our denomination and she wrote a book called Even Though. And it's basically, you know, I will, I will praise God even though this crap happens. Mm. Said she spent a good amount of money of buying clay pots and stuff. And, they, and the kids, her and the kids would go in Great the back. Idea. And destroy stuff. And it was that, again, it was like, this is our time. Yeah, We're going to lose it during this time. And then we put ourselves back together. We pick ourselves up and we move on. We function during the rest of the time. But I think it's that either we don't give ourselves that time to grieve and freak out, or we grieve and freak out all the time. Yeah. And so it like we function for ten minutes and then we lose it for ten minutes and then and it's like that's you can't live like that. Or you, or you don't deal with it at all and it comes and takes it takes your time anyway. Well, and, and it I, wrecks you. It's I, gonna take your time at some point. You might as well you, give you it a space. Can't, you can't get away from it. Yeah. It's, it's part of you. Part of it is like do do we feel like it's Oh, I'm not having faith if I'm in this moment. I was listening to a guy teach last night on our SoulCon call, and he made this statement, and he didn't mean it like as hard as it hit me. He just said, God doesn't expect for you to deny that there's a storm. He just wants you to praise him in the midst of it. And, and that's the reality of it. That life is full of shit. There's shit everywhere all the time. We are constantly Especially on a plane. facing Delta. trouble. Yeah, Apparently, if you're on a Delta, Delta airplane. Uh, <laughs> guys... I didn't feel good on one Delta flight, and, and you just won't leave it alone. Dude. <laughs> okay, we're going to mention that in one second. Is that Floyd, worse than the person who died thought. on our flight? I think the diary is the diarrhea worse than the person I think who died the diarrhea is worse. Diary is Isn't that worse. weird to say yeah, that? Yeah. Somebody I dying do. on a flight. If you're, an, if you're a passenger, obviously. That was <laughs> the saddest. Unless you're the guy that dies. Right. Well, no, that's a that's, that's a good great. Thing, yeah, you're yeah. closer. You just, that's a great thing. Yeah. Already at 36,000 feet? Yeah. Jumping up. And before we get into the rest of it, welcome to You Won't Hate It, where we talk about life through the lens of pastors at the length of a cigar. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. I still have diarrhea. I think, you, what Joe, you, what you were mentioning, like, you have to confront the thing. And I think a lot of times, for myself personally, like, I feel like the little kid who's, I can't go to sleep. There's a monster in the closet. I, I think sometimes you just have to open that closet door. And, and it means, see Josh. And see Josh in the closet. It's creepy yeah. that he's hiding in there. <laughs> and like you said, if there really oh, is... I'm not scared at all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, is this all this in here? If there is a small Korean there, man, small, I'm not afraid. He's German. Uh, yeah. that, was my, that was my issue with the grudge all the time. They're like, oh no, a small... All Asian girls. Yeah, and kick like, her down the stairs. Uh, what, dude? dude she's I'm in. Let's Chucky. fight, Chucky. I'm like, yeah, he's got Chucky a knife. Scared me. He's a doll. He's though. this big. I, if there is something there, then you set aside time to deal with it. But I think a lot of times when we open that thing up, we realize that the issue is not as big as we had made it in our mind. You're right, and I think it's that it's that potential or loss of potential that is so scary, and it really is. I have to always remind myself I make things out to be bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I blow things yeah, out of proportion, oh. and even if they are, even if they are that big, we're going to be okay. Well, that's like, exactly right. Okay. That's it. That's it. Got to get a thousand foot view. I try to live that way. I'm like, I'm, I'm just too, I'm too close to everything all the time. So yeah. I, my, my process is always like, back it out. I mean, like what's really at stake here? What's going on here? And so God's still on his throne. It's going to be okay. And it also helps me make, it also helps me make better decisions in the moment. Because if I stay in that place of fear, even when I go to those meetings, I can make things worse because mm -hmm. I'm operating out of fear in those conversations. Yeah. So I also want to be like, I could, I could keep making this worse if I don't deal with this and say, all right, now that I, yeah. then I actually just go and do the right thing. You know, even if I feel like that's going to make me afraid, I'm going to go do the right thing. And it always turns out better that way. I'm always yeah. like, you know what? Just going to do the right thing and yeah. it'll just be what it's going to be. That's funny. That's this situation right now. And luckily I just got a text that basically it's fine. And a lot of it is because I even, I even told myself, I, I, I literally thought like, of ways to get out of it or try and lie. And, and I really did. I had conscious thoughts of like, I could do that. And then I went, or you could just like tell the person you and face it, it and yeah. go, I'm sorry. It was literally a misunderstanding, but it still hurt the person. And I went, you know what? I'm sorry. I'll own it. And they're like, dude, it's fine. Let's, we just have to figure out how to work it out. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that's all, that's all I want. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, we're great. Like our friendship's still there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like yeah. it's great. We're fine. But it was because I made the other conscious decision of, you know what? I'm not going to take any of the scape 
goats. I'm not going to weasel my way out of anything. I'm going to face it. I'll, I'll accept whatever consequences you want. And then they're, they're like, yeah, there's no consequences, dude. It's no big deal. I'm like, oh, frick. I, there was nothing to stress out over. But it's just, it's funny that we it, we hurt ourselves with that kind of stuff. It's just not worth yeah. it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's torture. It's mm-hmm. torture. We were looking at stories, right? We were thinking about what we were going to talk about. I mean, first address um, Delta because we mentioned it. Okay. Uh, well, look, it goes right with it. We were looking at stories. And one of the stories we looked at was there was a Delta flight to Barcelona. Yeah. And the flight had to be turned around two hours in because a person had a massive diarrhea fit. Uh, so bad that the pilot was like, we can't go on. Yeah. And the, the, the turned the plane around. The pilot's in another room behind a closed no. door. When they got back. Isn't it a fire door, too? When they got. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's when they not got a back, diarrhea door. That's, that's oh. it. It doesn't keep that <laughs> up. Fire uh, <laughs> When they got back to the U.S., they had to clean it for five hours, including ripping out the carpets. What level of diarrhea are you having what? that yeah. rows and rows of, of uh, airplane it's, seats were affected? It's a, and why ha, was it so sudden that you couldn't make it to the bathroom? Please tell me it was one of your friends slipped you a pound of laxatives and they're oh, laughing their ass off. Somewhere that, somewhere. I bet it was a prank. If but how do you it, not get to the bathroom? How do you not? You're like, oh, my, my tummy's a rumbling. Yeah. So I get was, up, go to the bathroom, some, blow up the bathroom. Sometimes, though, like... I've heard I, some of those count, those uh, laxative pranks are pretty hilarious. Because that's it does hit you terrible. all out of nowhere. I had Because you don't know. I had to pee. Coming home, this last flight, I had to pee pretty bad. And every time I started to get up, the, somebody went in the bathroom. And I'm like... <sighs> and you don't want to stand there and wait, You don't right? want to stand there and wait. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up, finally, I just went up there and stood there and waited. Yeah, and you have to. a little porthole. It was yeah. fun. It was, I've done that many times where I'm like, I don't want to get up and stand there and wait for it. But then people keep jumping in. So yeah. I'm like, okay, eventually... I have to stand up and wait in line. And then I'm beating on the door. Hurry up. I got to pee. And then you just pee on yourself. Just, that's so Welcome gross. to this podcast. It probably won't make the cut. We, <laughs> yes, we devolve uh, pretty quickly. So we're looking at stories. That's yeah. where this came from. So we're sitting around looking for stories and a guy just walks in and he's like, hey, what is this place? I uh, was driving by and the Holy Spirit led me here. And we're like, we're looking at stories. Get out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. We're about to do a podcast. And I, what's funny is my first, it was neat that my knee jerk reaction was like, like, this is awesome. I have been led a lot of places by the Holy Spirit. Like, yeah. I, like we, I, I well, tell you, the story all the time. I went to Southeast Asia, wandered around for months, just following the Holy Spirit, learning about that kind of stuff. When somebody else does it, my normal knee-jerk reaction is BS. Like, even, though but, that's what you, even though that's what you practice. But you traveled across the world yep. with the intent of doing that. Yeah. On a Delta flight. Yeah, on a Delta flight. <laughs> and I, I it, the it's, it's odd to me that I... I think it's because I still have a, a, a tinge of doubt in myself. When I feel like I hear the Holy Spirit or think something, I'm like, I still have to be like, okay, was that God? Was that me? It's a normal thing. What's your Enneagram again? I'm an eight. <laughs> I like to challenge things. And so when I hear other people say stuff like that, I'm, I think I'm just immediately on the defensive and I'm like, prove it. But when this guy said it, there, and honestly, I think it was the Holy Spirit in him. I immediately was like, heck yeah, why? Like, right. I totally believed him. He's also Armenian, so there's a That's weird. Why. There's a weird kindred spirit. <laughs> That's why there, you too. believe he that. Also did, he also did a good job of not showing in, like the Lord had sent me here to tell you all this stuff, right. and he could that could be true too. But, but he literally, literally said, like, I, "I don't know." I felt like the Holy Spirit led me here. What is? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, tell me about your place. Tell me what's yeah. going on here. I'm trying to figure it out. And yeah. so I thought that's a fun lead in to how we see gifts of the Spirit, how we view being led by the Holy Spirit, like personally and as a church. I think it's interesting. Every time I've talked about it, like I've, I've preached at it, about it at camps and talked about it a lot, and everyone is so interested mm-hmm. because I think it's probably the most, I'll just say, confusing part of Christianity. The sure, Holy yeah. Spirit is, yeah. is a breath is a, is a spirit, like it's very ambiguous in scripture. And so I think the more, and here's what's tough. We're trying to name the unnameable, right? Yeah, we're trying he, to describe the undescribable. The other part about him is he's a who, not a what, which is, which is also yeah. challenging. He's, yeah. he's a who. He's you know, a who. Which is Google. like, which makes it, because you're, <laughs> which makes it difficult when you're talking to the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times we'll make it a nudge, but it's a, it's a person. And it's I uh, and it's interesting. Like in scripture, the Holy Spirit's more in the feminine form, which is always interesting, mm-hmm. and how it's gentle and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And so, yeah. I guess what are what are some of your experiences with spiritual gifts, the Holy Spirit, anything like that that we can kind of jump off of? Yeah, to talk we'll, about? we'll dissect. We'll basically yeah. shame you for how you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's yeah, what, that's we'll what do. we do. Yeah. So, what do you guys got? Josh? What What comes to mind? 
the Holy Spirit. It's been multiple things where I'm traveling and I'm just, I go on these spirit walks. I don't know what the day is, has for me, if I'm going to be of service to someone or, you know, meet someone new to listen to them or, or something fun, because I do feel like that God really does offer opportunities for us to have fun. As I, well that, as I, Let's jump off of that, because I think that's a really cool point. Yeah is that rightfully so, we so often look for ways to serve other people. I think mm-hmm. that's beautiful. I think the Holy Spirit does that. That should be our gear is to serve others, right? That's the example we have in Christ. But then I think we often forget, which is what I think the, the modern church has dropped the ball on a lot, is self-care, is that God doesn't want you to serve others at detriment to yourself. You can self-sacrifice, which I think is a conscious thing, but to run yourself ragged or to not find enjoyment in things, I don't think is the gospel. Right. And so I like that idea of like, Sometimes I'm led to enjoy myself. That's actually cool. And, and by the way, Josh, if you think of more stories or specific, just share them. Sure. I have a specific instance that jumps to mind. It was when I was first learning how to hear God, because that was kind of a foreign concept growing up. Like we talked about it a lot. I grew up charismatic, and so we talked about it a yeah. lot. Man. Isn't it funny that when you're a kid, so we both yeah. grew up in eight, we both grew up AG, mm-hmm. very spiritual. Assemblies of God. Yeah, Assemblies of God. I realized after I was older that I was always just told a about it, right? Never how or why or, right. and it's probably because I was young and I don't expect every week for them to talk about it. But there was rarely, if ever, an occasion where they would explain it. It's mm-hmm. funny because the Bible doesn't. If you think about it, there's not really a how to in the Bible. There's more well, just an is. I'm not, almost like I want to say, like, I want to give them some, give them some grace. I'm like, oh, why didn't you talk about this? What's more, funny Paul? is it, it's not even, and I'm not mad about it. It was more of just the realization of we often in churches have insider lingo and right. insider talk, and we just expect everyone to be on board, but we get so many visitors every week that we I feel like every week we're constantly explaining the whys and the hows sure. so that people are with us. Yeah. Throughout scripture you see Jesus heal in a number of different ways because I, I, I think that's partially because Jesus didn't want us to feel like there was a pattern. This is how you heal a blind man. I, I, I actually completely agree with that that I don't think he says this is how you pray. Right. Gives us examples of mm-hmm. ways to connect with and God. And look what we did with this is how you pray. We made it we made it like for a thousand years. The Lord's, the Lord's prayer. prayer. Like, like that's yeah. the prayer and like for yeah. a certain sects of uh, yeah. believers, that's the only thing they prayed. Basically, to your point, right. Jesus is like, we'll do that with everything. Right. We were, we're, we're, we're putting... Yeah. We're putting spitty mud on people's eyes all the time. Well, you know it, what I mean? it, what's funny is that is the pattern, that if you actually wanted to heal somebody, the pattern is spit. If you yes. read the Bible, it, it, we were to do that, and blind, we go, well, the blind no. guy's like, blind guy's like, wait, did I just... Because you just hear you spit? Yeah. Like, no, 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 he's just moving. He's dodging the whole yeah. time. No, 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 I'm good. You know what? I'm cool with not seeing. I'm fine without seeing. That's fine. fine. Oh, oh, oh. For every person, it's a little bit different how you yeah. hear from God. And given the situation, it's a little bit different how I hear from God. There are times that I will hear from God and it will sound like one of you guys. It will be your voice that I hear that reminds yeah. me of Well, I was just I told to today hear. I'm Jesus. Oh. And then there are times, a lot of times I hear the voice of God in my bride. One time, this one specific time, I was by myself. I was in the car. I had a specific amount of money set aside that I wanted to bless somebody with. I knew that that was going to be a blessing to somebody. I didn't know how it was going to happen. That's fun. If you've never done that, that's a fun practice. It's awesome. That's That's pretty fun. You're just looking for ways. You're just looking for some way to bless somebody. And I, I, I I have a set of money that I'm looking for someone to bless me with. Bless you with. Yeah, I have that in my mind too. In fact, it happens to be what you have in your wallet. Say (laughs) say your number. What's in your wallet right now? Uh, I think three hundred. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say three hundred. Which is, which is coincidentally much less than I have in here. I was expecting him to say. Numbers. Uh, so I so I set out that morning and I left. I lived just outside of town and I was driving into town. I was like, all right, God, I, I want you to talk to me, so just tell me where to go. And so literally, like I was in downtown Fresno, I was coming into Fresno from South Side. Get off at a weird, like I don't even remember where the beacons is, where the beacons oh, yeah, storage beacon building is. Yeah. yeah. And then I ended up like, and I've tried to find this place since, and I've never been able to find it. And it was literally just like I felt God told me, okay, go down this street, turn here, turn there, do this. There's where you're going. And I pulled into this. It was like a, like a box car from a train, a diner inside of that. And I didn't even know there was such a thing in Fresno, right? I've never been able to find it again. Weird. And uh, I'm sitting there and I, I just ordered breakfast. Uh, it was breakfast time. I just ordered breakfast. And I'm just sitting there kind of doing my thing. And I hear this lady talking about the needs that she has for her son to go to school. You just overhear her? I just overheard it. She yeah. was a waitress. I mean, he sat there. down at her table. Which I mean, was weird. I sat with her and said, tell me about yourself. <laughs> uh, no, he didn't even say anything. He's just listening. <laughs> 
I overheard. She's like, can I just help staring you? at her? She's like, overheard. Uh, she you, was right there. <laughs> so, so do you want to refill your coffee? <laughs> she was one of the workers there, and I she was talking to her coworker. She wasn't even talking to me, but I just happened to hear it. And so it was really cool. So when I left, my check came, paid my bill, and I just left that amount of money. It was I just left that as a tip and walked out the door. So I, you didn't you didn't tell her? Nope. And I knew. Oh, I kind of like you more now. I just knew that that was yeah. what I was supposed to do. It's yeah, I it, like that more too. It's yeah, the, the anonymous gift. It's pretty easy when you're like, here, ma'am, I overheard you and I'm doing this for, and it, we kind of take I, a lot of it. I typically put yeah. one arm up on the table right next to the tip and just look <laughs> up at them. Yeah. And then I point down at the mount. It's funny. I do this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've done that before too, but that's why I, I think that's really cool that it's like a you know what and then and here's what's interesting about stuff like that you're surrendering more than I think you even realize because you have to trust the money's going to get to them because the truth is you're like God do with this as you will right I'm not going to force this because here's the deal she might have gotten that and gone oh my gosh this other server needs it more right. and you didn't hear that server tell the story you don't know anything you just go God this is your money you figure it out. And God goes, yeah, I'm the king of the universe. I'll go ahead and take care of it for you. Yeah. And that's pretty awesome, dude. I like two, it. Two things. I really want to find this diner now. I, so yeah. do I. So I've bad. looked for it a number of times. Yeah. So bad. I didn't even, I, I honestly didn't know it's we had one. a boxcar? I still don't know that we do. Yeah. Well, it might have been a... That is kind of fun. Uh, hallucination. The second one is why isn't there? Why isn't there a how-to? Meaning, like a. I feel like God and science work together, right? You know, like God created science. So why isn't there a like? Oh, here's how you unlock blindness. Like, do you, do, do, do. Do you, you know, want I mean, my these opinion? four steps. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I have you, opinions on that. Too. Yeah, I want like why? Well, let's talk about that. Why, my why opinion is, is yeah. because then we would start worshiping the process. Yeah. That's good. I think we have dogmatism has overtaken so many aspects of dogmatism. Is that a word? Uh -huh. Being dogmatic. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, I've just can, never heard it before. You can ism anything. You can oh, ism yeah. anything. You can ism anything. It's a Joeism. It's yeah, a, we actually ism. Joe does have Joeisms. They're sing songs before. Yeah, yeah, and they're exactly. sing songs. They're sing songs. Song and I think that I think we would get so dogmatic about the oh. process. I think we would force ourselves to take our eyes off of God without the reliance of the who is actually doing this, now it's on us, right? Yeah, we would right. say, like, this is our process. We figured it out. Look at the number of churches that lead conferences on how to grow a church, how to follow the Holy Spirit, how to... And you're like, you are saying that you figured it out. Yeah. And I don't think any of us figure it out. And that worked no. for you. Yeah, which is beautiful. In that moment. And yeah. I think God awesome. blessed that. The truth is, everyone, I've always wanted to lead a conference that's just like, it's half a joke where I'm like, all right, guys, this is how to do it. Listen to God. Right. That's it. That's the whole conference. And because you charge like ten dollars. Oh, it's, it's so expensive. Okay, twenty dollars. And you're here for <laughs> here for three days. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's eight of these sessions. Uh, here's the well. The other part is like just talking about it. It does seem like the currency of power, like where you see God move in power, is faith. And so, yeah. and for a lot of us, that's not like good enough. Do you know what I mean? Like where it's along the lines of well, it's not tangible, and yeah. that's that's my problem. Is that Jesus tells the, one of the women at one point, he says, "Your faith has made you well." Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can struggle with something more in the Bible. What are you talking about? Didn't you? And it was like, well, it's your faith in me. And it's like, well, how then? Right. How do I garner more faith? How do I? Right. And again, yeah. even in that, Help me we in my look unbelief, for a way to that. systematize right. this or thing. Or quantify well, it. And, yeah. yeah. In that, in the specific instance that jumps to mind, your faith has made you well. I'm thinking about the woman who pressed through the crowd, right? She's breaking yeah, the law, her, yeah, being yeah. out unclean. And touched and, his garment. And, and, and struggles to get to the hem of his garment. It wasn't your works that made you well. It was your faith. Yeah. It was your belief. Now, you wouldn't have got that. Your faith would not have manifested itself had you not done the work. Well, yeah. that's where Paul says faith without works is dead, right? Like right. Your, your faith has to work. It's weird, yeah. though, because then you get the guy who's like, Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I give you. That's and then the he story that sent me to follow the Holy Spirit. That was right. the, the story. Yeah. And so the faith on that end, oh, that guy gets healed, but it's, it's Peter's faith. It's Peter's faith. Because that guy doesn't have faith at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's this weird dynamic of, and it is an action. I always think, uh, you know, how many people... 2,000 years later, pulled uh, people who were invalids up off of a mat, and then they just fell down, like, and your face, oh, nope, I just pulled you up to the air, and now you're right back on your face. <laughs> it's like, sir, my legs don't work. I don't I, know if I thought this. I already you told don't you this. get about this. I'm literally laying here. Have you ever, this is fun, have you ever done something like that where you're like, I feel like God wants me to heal this person, so you walk up and you do all the stuff, and then they're like, okay, I'm going to... I still have the problem. I'm going to the doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, has that ever happened where you, like, oh, messed yeah. up? I've stepped out in yeah. faith sometimes. And I'm like, yeah. well, uh, that didn't work. So, uh. So, why? <laughs> 
Why do you think that? And I'm just curious. This is fun, actually, because we the way we teach is that you should be putting yourself out there in faith, and it's okay to make mistakes. Right. God's it's, not it's, mad. It's God's got to show up anyway. Yeah. Your, your job is that faith. His job is to heal. Yeah. Right. But, so we just. But put when that you in. have the right heart, and you you you. But it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, and it's like it's all covered in love. It's shrouded in love, right? And so you're, you're trying to do the right thing. Did I have a bad motive? Was that about yeah. me? Was I mishearing you to do this? So what do you think's up with that? Are you that? going to use this later? I wish there was a program to follow. I wish there was a system to walk through. And there it's is like, an eight-week series called Flow that you could attend. You should give that a whirl. I'll check that out. I've heard a lot about it. That's fun. Um, so why do you think, and, and try and dissect either a specific situation or just the overall concept of why do you think you would be led to, to do something and it not work out? It's funny. You know, somebody used a line that I, uh, that I used to use, and I thought it was just funny because I would say God, he, he talked about going down a road that God led him down, and then it didn't, and it didn't work out the way he thought. And he says, God often, you know, dangles that carrot, so I'll go down it, so mm-hmm. he'll do something else. And I thought, I've always said that. Like, right. I always thought, like, God's leading me down a road, and if he, and if it's not what I thought, then I'm like, well, but he knew he needed to walk down this road for some reason right. and for something else to occur from it. I think a lot of it is, at least for me, and, I, and a lot of times I'm always like, I don't want to give an answer that's going to shut the conversation down. I don't think so. I think we can go even deeper with this. Yeah. But I think a lot of times, you know, God will lead me to do something because it's more about my action than the result. And he's more like, yeah. he's more like, I'm getting you moving here. And I've yeah. really come, really come, well, I guess, again, being so old, I've had the benefit of seeing, like, looking back, being like, yeah, that was the right thing. I didn't get the result I want in that moment, but I can look back and say where that was building. So I think a lot of times is God's more about, so we always talk about this, about you. Be about you. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? God's asking you to go do something. Are you going to go do it? That's the only answer. Not, I'll do it if, Right. You're going to give me this right. thing or do this thing. And to try and move yourself into that place of being like, I'm just feeling led. I will live. That guy lived with the consequences. He walked into the doors yep. of a church, had no idea what was going to happen. All he knew is he felt like he was, le- he was led to be here. And if he comes back on Sunday, he's going to live with some rough consequences. Yeah, you're, you're pretty I think it's the thing, the first thing that came to mind was Jesus asks me to follow him, not accomplish these things for him. Yeah, that being that it that's is good. just the willingness and not worrying about the results. This is going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to unveil my eight as much as I can right now. Why then, why wouldn't God quote unquote come through in those times? Why would he lead you to something and then not seemingly come through? Why, why the wild goose chase? Why? Mm-hmm. The, and, and I hope you know, this isn't necessarily how I think. I just think it's good for us to it's challenge. The right, no, it's the right yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Why, are... Because I look at it like if I, and I look at this with my kids. If I ask my kid to do something, I'm going to give them a very positive result on the end for positive reinforcement. I'm, I, 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 it'd be odd for me to ask one of my boys to do something and then not come through for them and be like, well, I hope you learn to obey. Yeah. Like that seems odd to me. What do you think God is really doing? What's the, what's the, I guess, why would he do that? I think there's a couple of things and I think it, it ties in completely to what, what Joe and, and Josh both said. I think that number one, I think God is more concerned about your obedience than he is about the outcome. I think oftentimes it's really more about us than it is about someone else. It sucks else. though when the outcome is something we want. 100%. That's the hard part. I like, agree. Like say the or what if is, the outcome's negative? Yeah, right. right. Which is, that's a it thing happens. that happens. Yeah, yeah. It does. We, we, People went on missions trips to other countries and got killed. And, and their, family got, their family got killed. Right. Yes. I, I right? think that's, that's, hap- a that's real happening thing. today. Yes. I think part of it is this is a chasing after the wind, right? This is vapor. All of this stuff is nothing in 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 the long run. In the Mostly scope just of this podcast. Mostly <laughs> it's so true. Podcast. Not even a vapor, just a, <laughs> um, a puff of smoke. And we oftentimes, I think, we conflate what the end result is supposed to be. I think there's also... Okay. I think, I think, Man, can that be a cop-out, though? Yeah, 100%. Totally. Okay, so then, yeah. And, I'm, and it can be self-soothing. And, yeah. No, we, it can be self-soothing. And I'm only saying that because I know when I listen to other people, and I know that when other people will listen to this, and I don't know if we're able to give a concrete answer, but I'd like to yeah. get as concrete as we can because that sounds like... Like it's almost, the scripture says that God will work all things together for those who love him, right. for the good of those uh, who love him. 828. Romans, um, Romans 828. Yeah. So the, the struggle is though, is like, dang, does not that sound like a cop out? L- it, let, me, let me bring some verses in, just the thoughts of these. Sure. No. Jesus the heals the blind guy on the second try. Why wasn't it on the first try? Which, to, which time? So when he got guys like, trees. he sees trees. I see men like trees. He looks like trees. And he's like, Jesus like, oh, oh does it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm th- I always think like, every time I see that, and when, and, uh, 
uh, when Elijah prays seven times. Oh, Why not one? Mm. Those always, for the, you know, I'm like, and always it interests me well, that something about the process matters to God, especially when I see Jesus. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus didn't mess up. I'm going right. to throw another, work. why didn't wanna, he do it instantly? Yeah. Right. Why right. didn't he just I'm going to throw world. another wrench in that we can talk about later, because I good. think we should keep going down this path. But that reminds me that we always forget about that there's another side. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Remember the, when, the, when the woman was possessed and it's like, man, we prayed, we couldn't cast out this demon, right. what's going on? It's, this demon only comes out through prayer and fasting. Right. You guys aren't, and it's like, there's something more. we forget there's another side to yes. this often, that there are principalities, and I, I know they're goofy terms for us a lot of times, but like, there's a devil. Right? Yeah. And there is an active force working against heaven. And we're the intermediaries. Like, that's kind of a goofy concept. Yeah. But I, I, I forget that anyway. So we can get back to that if we want. But I, I like this idea that it's like... The see through a glass darkly. Yeah. Right? No one day will see face to face. Like, we're in... We are in an imperfect process in an imperfect place and time. Yeah. With so, imperfect vessels. Right. Well, in Daniel, right? Daniel's praying a prayer. And then 21 days. And then he fasts for 21 yeah. days. And 21 days later, and then when the archangel gets to him, he says, I was released to your answer came at the moment you prayed, but it took me this long to get it to you because of the spiritual yeah. warfare in the process. And we forget about that. And I struggle with it. I hate yeah. it. Because I'm like, what? Yeah. Right. That's, the, that's why it's always weird to me about Jesus. I'm like, it's Jesus. He, nobody could do it better. Right. The, the, exactly. Like, I'm like, I always took that as grace on myself. I'm like, if that's I'm watching really good. And I always yeah, thought, yeah. and I always thought the same thing. I'm like if he's sharing the gospel and not everybody's getting saved, I'm like, okay, clearly it's not about you doing it right. Well, Oh, that's funny. I've literally this weekend, I'm preaching about that concept that it's like, you can do everything right. Everything perfectly actually. And wind up nailed to a cross. Yeah. Ooh. That's literally the outcome of that. And the guy did everything perfectly. Away, aba- your followers abandon, abandon you. you. Deny. Yeah. And That's abandon, insane. And, and I, yeah. I keep thinking like, okay, this can't be about, it can't be, I can't be putting my hopes on, did I do it right? I have to make it about, am I believing? Am I following? Which is why we can't make it about the process. Right. It's something I, that, right? I don't think you can or right. else that, like, it doesn't make sense. Oh, right. Something that I learned here that I think is, is beautiful. And yet at the same time, I feel like if we're not careful, it can be a cop out. I think Joe is the first one I heard say it, but we all say it. Hey, I don't know, but this is what I feel like God is saying to me. And I think that that the heart of that is accurate because we are an imperfect being no matter how you look at it. And we're just trying to do the best that we can with the information that we have. I feel like this is what God's saying to me. I think God wants to heal you. I know God wants to heal you. I think this is the time, but I don't know what the result of this will be, but I, I know like this that. is what I'm supposed to do. I like the remaining. That's that's where I think humility plays the largest role in our lives. Right. That we I don't think we talk about humility enough and how right. important it is because it's that realization of, I think the Holy Spirit is saying this. I think the Holy Spirit is leading me to this. Yeah. I very well could be wrong. Because I'm or, screwed up. Right. Or like like our friend just walked in. I loved the way he said it because he said, look, I, I know the Holy Spirit led me here. He knew right. that part because he, no wasn't, idea he wasn't doubting that. I don't get it. I don't know why. What do you guys what's, do? What's this about? What's, yeah. And I'm like, that's the humility. That, the curiosity is yeah. so fun. Yeah. And I'm like, instead of God led me here, so I have to share this message. He didn't have that. He yeah. was like, God led me here. That was all God said was like, hey, stop there. And he didn't fill in the blanks. He's a missionary. Yeah. Didn't yeah. he say that? Yeah, he did. But he didn't yeah. start with that. Mm-hmm. See, Very cool. When we when I've done some, uh, we've done some training with like different more charismatic groups like Bethel and stuff like that. I've heard them say things. So early on, I'm just kind of listening to what they say and just checking it out coming from a very Baptisty background. And I'd hear them talk about how not my will, but your will be done as a cop-out. So Jesus says mm-hmm. that, obviously. Uh, and so, and I, I kind of bought into them, like, yeah, I get that. I could see how you basically, you're copping out. You're basically saying, like, I'm going to believe, but you know what? I'm going to take myself off the hook from believing. Yeah. And I, then I thought, but how does Jesus say it? And it's not a cop-out. It's not a cop-out. So Jesus didn't cop-out. So there is a, a level of, I believe, but even inside that, I'm going to believe full fullheartedly, I still also realize that your will is what's going to happen. Because that's, that's what I'm banking on. That's humility. Right. Yeah. Uh, the problem is pride, I think, is the greatest sin to God. I really do. I know there's not levels, but I'm like, I think pride's at number one. It's what took Satan away from him, mm-hmm. takes every one of us away from him, is thinking we can do this better on our own. It's the humility that says, I don't have all the answers. Right. How can I, in my short, goofy little life, I don't care how many great experiences I've had, 
how can I think I had this figured out? It, right. Like, again, we are dealing with the unknowable, unnamed God. Right. Like, how are you going to say, like, I got it, figure it, it, of, take my class? One of the most beautiful real-life examples I've ever seen is Steph's dad. Steph's dad lived his life for ministry, gave his health for ministry, did a lot of things, literally cost him physically Mm. because he believed that's what he was called to do. He was dying of cancer. The The cancer actually had separated his spine. He lost the use oh, of his legs oh in the last gosh. few days. Yikes. It was, wow. it was all, it all happened pretty quickly. That's amazing. And he was up until the very end, he was like, I can believe, I believe completely that God could heal me and raise me up out of this bed in a moment. Mm -hmm. But even if he doesn't, I'm, but, I'm, I'm good either way. Yeah. That's it's the Daniel Shad line. It's Shadrach, yeah. Meshach, yeah, and Abednego. Yeah. It's like God, God can deliver us from this, but even if he doesn't, he's still God. Yeah. yeah. That's the, even though that's the book Heidi wrote is yeah. the, even though it's like, no matter what happens, even though all that's going on, I'm still going to worship. And God. I I'm think the tension him. is how do you have that hundred percent belief? Cause God does want us to believe. He wants us to step out. You know what I mean? Like risk, do these things. And yet at the same time, be like, I 100% believe. I think it's more logical. I 100% believe. But I also know I'm not going to heal you. God is. Right. And so his will, ask, I have to be in line. So I'm going to believe. And God might even change his mind if you want to go through that whole thing. Jeez, and, yeah. and actually and I say, you know what? Because you believe I'm going to respond. We've seen that in scripture. But the reality is it's still on him in that moment. I'm going to believe 100%. But I still need to know, and I'm even fine with saying someone's like, but this will be God. Yeah. Either he's going to do this right. or not. I'm believing yeah. and I'll risk and I'll put myself out there and I'll even say, I believe God's going to do it. But even after I say that, I know God still has to be the one to do it if yeah. it's going to be him or not. I, I think, it's re I think it, it relates to like being a dad. Like we, we want the absolute best for our kids. Yeah. But what they want isn't always what's best for them. It's funny you say that. I, when I first got saved and I was well, I got a buddy of mine, Kevin uh, shared Christ with him, and then his buddy was getting out of jail. Uh, where Kevin, they were they were cellies, and so he gets out of jail. His name's Keith, and we were talking about this very topic. It's brand new. I remember riding the car on our way to Willow. He's like, he's coming to church with us, and anyways, and we we're just talking about this idea of faith in a very simplistic. I'm I'm five seconds old in Jesus, yeah, so I don't have this yeah, profound yeah. concept. But I remember just thinking about how does faith work. He's asking me, and I said, I kind of see it like. You're, you're at a grocery store with your dad. I think a kid who believes their dad is a good dad and who has money, he's not poor, he right. can afford anything, and he's a good dad and he'll give me anything. I have that in my mind. My dad give me anything he wants, he loves me, and he can afford it. So I think what a kid does is he starts putting stuff on the conveyor belt at the grocery store saying like, well, he can afford it and he wants to do it. That's our job. And then the dad's job is to say, but wait, this is all candy. We're going to have dinner later. And so he takes it off the conveyor belt. Yeah, and I said, I think that's the that's two separate jobs. My job is to believe my dad is good and he's able. Wow. And so I put it on the conveyor belt. Yeah. And then his job is to say, well, that's not good for you right now. That's really good. <clears throat> the thought that it keeps floating around in my head is this, that idea that there's a, there can be a delay or it may not happen on the first time. And I think I'm, I'm seeing a gap in my behavior in that I will often pray for something once. And then I'm like, oh, not happening? All right, not God's will. Like, because I trust God's will concept very, very much. Like, right, God right. has the best plan right. for me. I surrendered to that years ago. So I'm like, if it doesn't happen, or if it does happen, that's all on God, and that's God's will. So I'll ask once, and the, the, the message that we get in Scripture is not that. No, not no. even close. It's God. pressing in. I did five sit-ups. Where are my abs? No, I, yeah, I, five. I remember. Oh, you are yoked. <laughs> I, uh, when I was church hopping around uh, during college and such, there'd be instances where people would say, like, when you're praying to God, you're asking for something, the answer's always yes, no, or there's no, another time or something. Yeah, or not now. And yeah. I'm like, that's that doesn't make sense. Anytime you pray for anything or you're seeking him, the answer is always, I love you, I have the best for you. I have the best in mind for you, mm -hmm. which encompasses everything, whether it be... It, any time it's ever a yes, it's on his timing. Yeah. It's, in, it's in his will. Yeah. If it's ever a no, it's... It's not necessarily no. It's always, I have the best for you. Yeah. And if it's another time, that again, that covers both of them. And that's something that I think people, I think they are focused on the wrong thing. Instead of just like, hey, you, you know, you have the opportunity to pray to God, but you're so focused on him fixing your situation, you may not yes. see that he has. I think we get blinded by our struggles like that. Other yeah. matters at play. Yeah, you want to even ask for weird stuff, right? You know, ask and you'll receive, which I love well, wrestling through that kind right, of stuff. Yeah. All or the time. when you align your heart with God. That's the key. You can so, pray for anything, right? We, we always mess up condition. all those different things. And uh, I had a guy on Thursday night actually say, I, I've said this for a while, is that Psalm 1 is, I've always called it the Christian Midas touch. Mm -hmm. It's basically ask for anything and you get it. 
Like, it, it says, everything you touch will prosper. And I'm like, it's Christian Midas touch. But don't forget about the whole first part of Psalm 1 <laughs> that talks about you're like a tree planted with its roots close to the water. You are tied in you want to God. God. You, want right. what God wants. you want what God wants. You want what God wants. And I, I think, I, again, I'm just going back to it. because I keep. And by the way, you can want what God wants for you. So yes. you can actually want good things for yourself because yeah. you're in line with this is what God wants for you. Yeah. yeah, but I keep, it keeps coming up in my head is the, the pressing in concept that it's not like a 21 days is a long time to wait, but he was focused and he was driven. And the, it's probably the most theologically confusing scripture to me. It's like someone who nags enough to I get what they want. This. And I'm like, it's two of nope. Them. It's the nagging it lady, the judge, and it's the and neighbor. The, the neighbor trying to get into the dude's house. That's right. Both I, of those I, are like, and I'm like, nag God is the prayer life? I don't like those because it, it actually... Right. It flies in the face of my theology. It always has. And I'm like, but it's in the Bible. So I can't really argue. <laughs> Is there a much. way to do you, do you, nag humbly? Do you have right, a, reconcile humbly, that. Yeah. Reconcile you, this concept. Do you have a repetitive prayer of something that you're asking God for that you pray for every day or multiple times? Do you have something like that? Or do, I used to and, be like too I was too I was too uh, noble for that. You know what's funny? Spread is, them around you, all and you have around. an alarm set in your phone to remind you to do it. So this mine is be. mine is sh- I have shamed myself out of that. Yeah. No, he said he said mine is you said mine is sh- <laughs> mine is sh- uh, mine is shame. That's probably why I, you poop nine times a I, day. That's true. I have literally shamed myself out of that, and I'm realizing literally now that's probably bad. Yeah. I have won't pray for myself very often anymore. I used to, yeah. but I'm like, look, there's too much need out there. It's selfish, and I need to focus on everyone else. So it's interesting because I'm like, I have taken, I will still pray for myself, but they're very quick snippets. They're not an intercessory. They're not yeah. pressing in. It's, I think when it's, I think about it, like, oh God, I, I actually need some help in this. And that's it. And I'm like, oh, but if you don't help me, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I think it's one of the greatest struggles of, of Christians and maybe maybe especially Christian men, which is where a ton of my ministry is focused. But I have the benefit of, uh, while you guys were on sabbatical, I, I got the first part of John 17. And the first part of John 17, those first five or six verses is literally Jesus praying for himself. Yeah. And so as I was studying through that, man, it really it wrecked me. That is like, neat. Yeah. I, you, we should be praying for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with praying for ourselves. In fact, we have biblical models of Jesus a, doing it. Well, a lot of biblical models outside yeah. of Jesus. Outside too. Of like, Jesus. Oh, there's, yeah. David, there's a whole uh, psalm about and, and David I, praying for himself. He's yeah. in a cave for crying Give me out my loud, enemies. Like, right. you yeah. Name it, like rescue and me. I, and, I, and in studying for that, in prepping for that sermon, I went through a lot of those. Yeah. Like I went through a lot of those self prayers and it's important, man. I, I think one thing that we missed too, we talked about pride and humility and I keep saying I'm going to do a, a teaching on this at some point. The essence of biblical humility really is not thinking of yourself less, right? It's not thinking less of yourself for sure. It really is saying about yourself what God says about you. I would just, it's funny you say that. I was going to say, I was going to say humility is not about taking yourself down a notch. It's about context. So basically mm-hmm. when I'm praying for myself, it's in the context of praying for everyone else, as opposed to like, that's all I do is pray for myself. And right. every day I get up and I pray for me and all the things I want and all the things in my life. Humility is to say, well, no, like I'm a part of something. Mm-hmm. And so it'd actually be unhealthy to not include me in that. And it's unhealthy to only focus on me. Yeah. So it's just context where I'm just saying like, part of my prayer is me. Part of it's my kids, my friends, my church, my family, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's just, I think it's just having a healthy context that it's not only is it not all about me, it's also not, not about me. Like you can't make it. I'm not a part of this yeah. either. We, we are, maybe it's me, but I, I feel like we're, we're all or nothing people. It's difficult for me to, to have that healthy. I think it's why like scheduling my life is so difficult. Cause it's like, I'm either doing, I, I, I tend to do things all in. And so I'm I put all of my effort and energy into this one thing. And it's like, well, yeah, but you have 15 others. Right. So that the healthier version is that like, there is some of this, some of that, some of that. And it's, then yeah. it's my struggle with budget. It's my struggle with a financial budget because I'm such a whatever in that, in the, like if, if it's on, if it's in the book, if it's in the book, if it's on the list, like yeah. then we do it. If it's not, then we don't. And so if I want a cup of coffee, then I feel like, oh, I, I can't. It's not in the budget. Yeah. Because I don't do discretionary spending. Isn't it funny that we create, I, I love that we create our own prisons 100%. all the time. Oh, yeah. We yeah. do it yeah. all the time. We and even with God, like we've decided that that you're not supposed to pray for yourself because it's selfish. So we create that, and then we're like, we and if we step out of it, then we punish ourselves. Ooh. And I think God's like, hey, what's happening? Yeah. I actually saved you, and it's one of my favorite things is when Paul says, "You've been saved into freedom for freedom, for freedom, for 
freedom's sake. Yeah. I think that is one of the most profound things that it's like you weren't saved into bondage and slavery to God. You were yeah. saved into freedom for freedom. Like you get to make, and here's the deal. Sometimes they're really healthy parameters that we put on our lives and they're sure. really smart. A budget I think is very intelligent. Yeah. yeah. But again, be smart with it. Don't let it rule your life. The thing that yeah. comes to mind and the block for me was uh, there was a lot of guilt and shame about it. I actually struggled with praying the Lord's Prayer for a long time. When my, my grandpa got really ill, he ended up in assisted living and it was the last time we prayed with him and he's laying on his bed and my parents were like, let's, you know, let's say goodbye. We don't, he's not doing well. We don't know. If he might have a week or two. We we're all standing around the bed and I couldn't and I I yeah. turned around and I, I stood in the corner. I couldn't, and I couldn't finish it. And, uh, and, and God obviously understands. He knows the words I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit prays with moans and when, groanings. When we're yeah. not, when we have nothing to say. Yeah. yeah. And He's so. Shaming and condemning you for what you do. He is, he is. Yeah, yeah. And you I remember see, uh, even. Uh, what's the, the Guardians of the Galaxy? It's the same thing. Yeah. He, he, he walked couldn't, out of the He room. walked, couldn't hold her hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to call you When I, well, even at the funeral. I couldn't, I broke down and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, pray the Lord's prayer, which is something that's, I mean, dude, it's, <laughs> I was raised Lutheran. Right. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. it's, if, it, it, if I have zero brain cells left and I'm on my deathbed, I at, at least those last words yeah. I could say. And, but at the time I was uh, a few years into sobriety and the, the only other prayer that was right at the forefront was the serenity prayer. And I also, my sponsor and I also called it the humility prayer because it is more of a pragmatic approach to life. And it's the, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. I, that, know. by the way, has always been one of the most powerful. Isn't that, it crazy? The serenity prayer and the the sand, uh, footprints in the sand. Like, yeah. some, like somebody said those things. Those are, that's amazing. They're very powerful. Like changed and changed our world. Yeah, but I don't, I don't make fun of the serenity prayer very much. No, Footsteps. It's, <laughs> it's only because Footprints of, in the sand I make fun. I don't know why. It's just so cheesy. It's so cheesy. Somebody said it the other day, and I was like, that's so... And that's where he carried me. But I literally... That's where she carried me. Yeah. Phenomenal. The point of that was that, that serenity prayer, that's the one thing that I do. That's, yeah. that's, that is daily. That Oh, is it? That's, that's it's such is, a good one. I, think I should remember that I more. I honestly so think it is... And it kind of just hit me, like but as we're sitting here. That's why people. That's how people stay sober. Yeah, mm. it's that. It's good. it's not. That's the beginning of their spiritual um, being. Yeah. You know, I think that's why I am here. That's awesome. Yeah. For a awesome week, I did something that uh, a pastor that I listened to, who I love, named John Corson. It, he called it the. I don't remember what he, he called it, but every hour it was a. It was a an alarm that I set every hour and it was an hour, it was a prayer of gratitude. So every mm. hour when that alarm would go off, I would pray and write down something I'm grateful mm. for. And it was a prayer. It was a, it was yeah. a grateful prayer. And I did it for a week and I'm like, it is exhausting. The, it's oh. exhausting. Mainly it's, I hated my alarm going off. It was constantly. And so I'm like, gosh, dang it. Cause you're like, damn it, Joe. Oh wait. But, right. Yeah. Here. I'm like, shoot. But it is, there, there is something that shifts in you when yeah. you're re, when it's just it's something that just reminds you to go back. So, have you noticed since then that you are are more focused on gratitude since then? Absolutely. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it did yeah. it's almost a reset. Right? For sure. And yeah. and are you because back to the beginning of this? And are you praying for yourself? Are you finding things now that you're praying for yourself about? So no. The gratitude was for all the the blessings, yeah. uh, tangible and un untangible. Um, that's kind of that's kind of a hilarious con. Contradiction. No, you're right. right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm super grateful, never asking for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, but I'm super grateful. Like, but these are things in your life. Yeah. So, but it's interesting. I am, and I've been wrestling with this for a couple weeks now. I've been studying through the different theories on atonement and all that kind of stuff. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Uh, what Christ did when he died, what actually happened, what was the sacrifice. And I'm realizing that there's a good amount of my theology, to be honest with you, that's probably off, that I still have this tinge of genie in the sky concept that I, do, I don't know how to break mm. and I don't know. I don't want it. I don't believe it's true. I genuinely don't c consciously. But there is something subconscious that, well, if I do this and this bad thing happens, so that means that I dropped the ball somewhere. I got to right. find out where right. I screwed Isn't up. Isn't it like, weird how some of that's true, though? Yeah. That's the problem with that. Punitive. Some of God's it is. God's not punitive like that, but there are consequences. I, I'm always trying to figure that but out. But you just said it. I think that's where I'm, I'm, I'm landing is that God's not punitive. The, God isn't doing this negative thing but because I did something. Punitive. But there are consequences there are to our actions. There are things that he's allowing. That's, but yes. it's so hard to sometimes to separate those. Absolutely. You know I mean? like it's where you're hard. Just right. like, yeah. You know, I, I see stuff with my kids and I'm like, did I pass that garbage down to them? Sure. Even like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, it's hard not to think like that. Yeah. And God's constantly telling me no, but it's hard not to be like, uh, especially when I'm looking back. Yeah. I tend to look back at yeah, it and yeah. be like, hmm. 
It, did I cause this? Did I get something? Yeah. Did I butterfly effect this somehow into my kid's life? Yeah. And Trey is so much like me in so many ways that a lot of times, like, he'll do something and I'll get frustrated by it and I'll just bite my tongue and stuff. And he'll go, you, gotta, you taught him that. Mm. Yeah. Like, you, that's... Is that why it makes you upset? It's because you're seeing... Yeah, 100%. For sure. Traits of yourself. I, I feel like there's I wanted a... to break in me that I right. never got broken. And then, then you're heartbroken that it actually yeah. got passed I, on. I, I will yeah. say that's part of the healthy part of praying for myself is that's just the place where I let that go. Is like, because I'm praying for my kids and for me at the same time. And that is the spot where God and I are working that out, where I'm yeah. praying about it, especially if my kid's facing a challenge or something like that, I'm facing a challenge. And I'm facing a challenge. And a lot of time, God's like, he's like, you had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Like, that was that. And well, if going you to did, meeting, yeah. Or if I did, he'll, okay. he'll show me. Like, here's There's what you grace do. Yeah. That or, There's grace for that. Or like, I'll go into stuff when I'm praying for myself and he'll he'll start saying like, this other thing that you're worried about messing up because of this thing are not connected at all. Like, I, I still get that. Like, where I'm like, oh man, if I mess this up, then, you know, the, all yeah. these dominoes. And he's like, he's like, they're nowhere near each other. In fact, that I pray yeah. about it allows me to go, okay, let me just stay right in this space with this thing and not worry about all the impact it could have. And elsewhere. I think that's what I need to work on because I have this, this false idea that praying for myself is selfish and selfishness produces some pretty negative things in life and there yeah. are consequences to that and so which mainly would be my pride increases right. and so the domino effect is well now I'm not going to ask for anything because if I'm asking selfishly which it feels like anything I ask for for myself is selfish so immediately that's correlated right you connect and us. so if I'm being selfish then God will punish is literally like if I'm being honest I think that's what the trail is for me. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, I don't want to be punished by God because of my selfishness. Yeah. So then I have a false sense of humility because mm. it is false. Right. Yeah. Is that it I'm based like, out of fear? Oh, I, I think, and I think that's what I've been wrestling with over a little while now is that I still think there is an interesting level of fear with me and God. That's what pushes me in the direction of pride. Like, oh yeah, it's not, oh, what am I doing? What do I have to be scared of? Uh, no, I got this. I'm okay. Yeah. You oh, know? interesting. The same aspects of like when we talk about in, in recovery, being humble and like the simplest thing is someone complimenting you, you know, yeah. on in, in your gift, oh, yeah. something that happens, I'm that's God given. <laughs> so it's my favorite part. Of um, my oh, who was I talking about? Rec I, I was talking to someone recently and you, you, your voice came up. We were saying, accept, accept yeah. it. I said, receive. There's, Receive. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so it's. I, it I is. Uh, accept, so I heard someone else. It must have been in my head. <laughs> and I said. It, I said. Exceed. Oh, mm -hmm. it really is true. There's something about that honest self appraisal, where humility isn't. It, it isn't the the worldly meekness that we talk about. Yeah, that it's not. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It's that right sized. No, and like I'm a child of God. That's my identity. That's my worth. So if I'm receiving this and anything outside of that, then that makes me maybe maybe. That self awareness. I'm afraid that God will see that that I'm not. I'm not really identifying myself as, right. as His child. I'm yeah, identifying myself in, in what I do mm. or where I'm at, what I'm, my abilities. You know that this it, person's complimenting. It's interesting because they talk about the selfishness too. Back to that, I'm like, what, where, why? Because I pray. I pray for myself a lot. I pray for just a lot of things. But and I was just thinking, like, you're what? naturally a pretty selfish person. That's right. <laughs> I don't know where it's up. And I think Obvious. the reason why I don't ever, fish. I don't ever feel feel that way is because I started with, in my prayer life a, a while ago, is what's my call? So I just pray into that. And so even if, if my call has rewards attached to it, that doesn't make me feel selfish because it's kind of like that's just in line with what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I'm always just praying into my call and there are the worker's worth is wage. So there's stuff that just comes along with that. Yeah. And so I've been, when I pray about stuff, it's really inside my call. And some of those things are really fun things, but they're still inside my call. Mm -hmm. And so right. even if I yeah. really enjoy them, it's, it's really still the same. Like it's just a benefit of walking in my call and those right. results are a part of that. And so I think yeah. that's where I'm like, no, it, I think it's most of them just focusing on what am I supposed to be doing? And then I'm praying for those things to come to pass that you're asking me to that's, do. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking when you were when you were saying, and the receive thing, that comes from my buddy Brent Taylor in Oregon who speaks mm. tremendous volumes into my life. Um, and the, this is something that he has helped me with. The thing is that when we're praying, and I was I was gonna, going to say this to you, but I have to accept it for myself too. When when we're praying for ourselves, the, the reality of it is, is our church, our community, our friends, our family, Family is better if we are our best self. And the only way that we can be our best self is, is if we learn to focus on self-care. A part of self-care is praying for ourselves, that God would lead us, guide us, direct us, help us, give us the things that we need and some of the things that we want. Yeah. And, and then let him, 
let him sparse that out, right? Like, yeah. we can ask. I like the idea that, like, we can put it on the conveyor the conveyor belt. Conveyor belt, like, beautiful. That's, o- that's okay. I don't think God is slapping our hand away. Right. And again, it goes back to humility for me, where it's like a, yeah, I can, I can humbly ask, I can humbly want, I can desire things, and then mm-hmm. I, can, I can trust that God is big enough to choose. Yeah. It, it's not me. I'm... Because, again, if he were a genie, I would just get everything I wanted, and a lot of that stuff would hurt me. I don't know. Yeah. And so this allows me to have that genuine faith and trust that he's in control. He's got the best for me. The cop-out that I feel like we've run into is the, like, well, then whatever happens is fine. It's like, no, (laughs) that's where the pressing in in prayer actually often happens. And especially when you look at a lot of those pressing in prayers, we're for them. or the nation of Israel, which they are a part of. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, that's right, like, those are selfish prayers, it sounds like. Right. And then to add works to our faith. Work. Yeah. Whenever I pray, whenever I'm praying and there are rewards attached to it, God's constantly reminding me of the rewards that will other people will benefit from. Not just for me personally. Like the stuff that I'm asking for that might have some sort of a benefit that I'll experience. It's always attached to it's benefiting the world, it's benefiting people, it's benefiting the gospel, it's benefiting the kingdom. And that really it's a balance. It's that balance part right. of it. Yeah. Like you figuring I, out that balance is interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. And it's going through that and it, it's just it's fascinating to me actually. Yeah, it took me years to break what you had said earlier. There are things that I enjoy that are part of my calling. It took me years to break. I, I had this mindset and I think it was growing up listening to missionaries and stuff and it was everything was difficult and I thought it's always a poverty spirit right it, like everything everything serving has to be poverty. tough yeah. and if, if you're having fun that means you're not fully in the gospel right, right. right. and I'm like wait a minute why yeah. can't which is why we modeled our church the way that we do mm. this should be enjoyable I actually yeah. think that you will learn more in laughter than you if we're serious all the time it's like so it's okay to joke it's okay to laugh it's if we're dissecting giant you know issues that we are there's these huge theological concepts we can joke about it and laugh about it because it lets our guard down and lets it sink in a little bit better. Mm. I can I can enjoy this also. It doesn't mean there won't be times of pain. It won't be difficult. But even in those times, there's joy. Yeah. And I'm like, joy is enjoyment. Literally, yes. that's what it yeah. comes from. You know, like. So I, I think I, it's interesting. I was just in Cancun with three very wealthy guys, and all three of them were talking about how they wanted to just be in full time ministry. Yeah. Like. Really. Yeah. And I just kept thinking, like, well, how blessed are we? Yeah. That we get to like like these guys have money. You know what I mean? And they're just like, man, all I want to do is be in full-time ministry. And it just it just got me thinking about the idea of there's a reward in the call. You know what I mean? And we're and we Absolutely. sometimes we don't see it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Until you see somebody looking in saying, I wish I were in that spot. Yeah. Yep. I think the really cool call. thing is that we get to do this. There's nothing better. Well, I love it. Thanks for joining us on You Won't Hate It. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. I still have diarrhea. <laughs> I was hoping. I was so hoping. <laughs> I was in my head.